So when I first started using Ableton, I had some issues with the drum racks. So I couldn't sidechain to individual drums, didn't have individual send and return tracks for each drum, so I couldn't just put reverb on the clap, for example. And I couldn't layer samples, so if I wanted to use a combination of two kick drums, I'd put them on separate pads, use separate MIDI notes. Just really inconvenient. So if you've had any of these issues or any other issues with drum racks, I'm going to show you the tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way to help use just one drum rack in my tracks and not come up against any restrictions. That's all coming up. How's it going guys? It's John Holt here with The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. Now here on this channel, what I do is a variety of music production tutorials, mainly focused towards beginners and beyond. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's jump straight in to this Ableton Live tutorial. So one of the things that I wanted to be able to do with a drum rack that I couldn't do when I started out was have individual send and returns for each of the drums in the drum rack. So if I wanted to put reverb on just the clap, for example, I couldn't actually do that because it would have just apply reverb to the whole thing by using this style here, and that's not what I wanted. So the way around that, um, we'll open this up just up here. Uh, if you come down, what you want to do is open up the chain list and then hit the R for Romeo just down here. And then we open up this section just here. Um, this opens up returns that you can apply to each of the individual tracks. And there's a couple of ways to do it. So the first way, you right click just here and do create return chain. And now you'll see on each of these individual drum hits, so the kick, the clap, snare, whatever. And um, we've got a send here, just like the sends here. And what we need to do now is come back to the drum rack and actually route that to something. So I'm gonna route that to reverb A, which means that it's gonna to go to this reverb send just here, but it's only gonna be what we turn up here. So I'm gonna send the clap there and I'm gonna put a little drum pattern in just so that we can hear this. So I'm going to turn this up on the clap and you're going to hear reverb on just the clap. Okay, so that's one of the ways that you can do it. The other way um, is to just drop an audio effect that you want to put on to one of these drums into this drop audio effects section here. So let's take a ping pong delay, pop that down there. Um, it's rooted to the rack output, which is absolutely fine because we've already got an effect in here. We don't have to send it to a different one. So now this is going to be send B, the ping pong delay. I'll rename that reverb just to keep a track of it. And now if I turn up send B on the clap, you can hear that lovely ping pong delay. Next, what I want to do is show you how you can layer or sort of blend two samples together and trigger it with just one MIDI note because I've certainly been in situations before where perhaps I've wanted to use two different kick drums, um, one with a bit more of a click or an attack and then another with a little bit more weight and I wanted to blend them together because that was the sort of kick sound I was going for. But what I would end up doing is maybe coming up here and putting the two kick samples on here and here and then putting two different MIDI notes in, having to edit the kicks individually. It just didn't really work very well. So I'm going to show you an alternative to that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide the chain list. I'm going to get rid of the kick that's in here by default. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to instruments and I'm going to grab a sampler. So by default, samples go into a simpler when they go into the drum rack. I'm going to take a sampler instead. Now, it's a bit more of a complicated synth, but don't worry, the, the controls that we're going to be going for are really, really simple. So, you can see we've got the drop sample here box. What I'm going to do is open up where it says zones, and then I'm going to grab the two samples of kick that I want. Start off with just a 909 for a nice bit of weight. And I know I've got another sample in here. That's it. This kick drum 
which has a, a little bit more of a clicky sort of attacky sound to it. I'm going to see if I can blend these two samples, um, make them sound cool together and do it using just one MIDI note. So I've dropped them both into this zones section just here. When I put a MIDI note on the kick section in this drum rack, it's going to trigger both of the samples in this zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the pattern. I'm going to turn these off and on, which these are just mute solos so that you can hear that. So that's just the 909. That's both of them together. And then that's just the Chicago one. It's really handy being able to trigger those with just one MIDI note. But if you want to turn one down, turn one up, then what you can do is come down here. You can select the kick drum that you want to edit from this menu just here. And you can adjust the volume just here. So I'm going to leave the 909 as it is, but I'm going to come to the Chicago one and turn it down by about that much just there. So now when we play this, it's going to be much more subtle. Um, and yeah, we'll have a listen to what that sounds like. Firstly, with just the 909. Now with the Chicago kick in there. It's fairly subtle. Um, you're only going to hear it if you're listening on good speakers, but it's a really nice way to blend those sort of samples. And if you're using just individual samples, then you might not be able to get the full kick sound uh, that you're looking for. It might be lacking in a bit of attack or a bit of low end. And instead of trying to fix that with an EQ, blending some samples together is a really cool way to go about that. And this just makes it really, really nice and easy to do. So my last drum rack trouble was sidechain compression and getting just one individual drum to trigger a sidechain on something else like a pad. So just as a brief explanation, if you don't know what sidechain compression is, uh, it's basically where you've got one sound, um, normally a synth or something along those lines, and you want the kick um, to trigger a compressor that's on that synth to make it basically go quiet for a second while the kick is playing. Um, it just means that you can hear the kick a bit more clearly. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it for you now, and you're probably going to recognize it if you if you listen to EDM. It's a sound that you're probably going to be familiar with. Uh, it's used a lot by chain smokers and uh, pretty much every other sort of EDM uh, producer and DJ out there. So I'm just quickly going to grab Serum so that we can do a proper demonstration of this. Let's grab a pad. I'm just going to pop one note in. So what I want to be able to do is make the kick drum basically make the synth a little bit quieter just while the kick drum is playing. The way that you do that is you come onto Serum and you grab a compressor and you put the compressor on there. Hitting this little triangle is going to open up a little menu on the left hand side here. What you're going to do is click sidechain and for the audio input, which is what's going to trigger the compressor to actually work, we're going to pick kick core 909. Now this is as far as I used to get and what you'll see is that when I bring this threshold down, all of the drums, the hi-hats, the claps and the kicks are going to make the synth reduce in volume and it just sounds a bit messy it just sounds kind of weird and isn't really what we're going for so i'll show you that now what we want is just the kick drum to be making this yellow line which is gain reduction come down and the way that we do that um it's actually fairly simple probably should have seen it before but in this second menu just below audio from what you need to do is select kick 909 post fx and now you're only going to see this yellow line coming down when the kick drum plays and you'll hear that it gives the synth a really kind of nice sort of pumping effect that's a lot of what sidechain compression is used for is sort of groove and a pumping effect so have a listen to this
So there we go. I'm going to play it again without the sidechain compression on, and then I'm going to bring it in for you. So there we go guys, I really hope you found this tutorial useful and you've picked up a couple of little tips that you'll be able to go away and use in your workflow. If you've got any questions or comments, then feel free to leave them down below. And also in the description box, there are some contact links if you wanna get in touch directly with me. I've been John Holt with The Audio Journey and I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.